Good afternoon. Dwayne here, Tractor Grangler School. And yes, we're back in the tax shed, and yes, we're by the stove, and yes, we've got a pot of coffee on, and yes, we're having a cigar. Uh, so does this mean a cigar video? I guess it does. Um, we had a storm come in, and it's wicked outside. Wind's blowing, it's cold, spitting rain, spitting snow. So there's no horse riding today. And, uh, but I, I did have something I wanted to cover, but it's one of those things that straddles horses and humans very well. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about, I want to talk about that. Okay. Um, so that last video I did with little Joe, um, we finished up with him put a saddle on him, rode him in the round pen, uh, Noah rode him, and then the boys saddled up and went on a big ride up on the mountain. Noah, Noah did, yeah, Noah rode him in the round pen, and then uh, Connor rode him up on the mountain. And they said he was a perfect prince. He was just a gentleman, he was quiet, he was calm. They came down a steep deal and came to a creek and he stood there for a minute, just paused for a second, and then Connor kind of said, let's go. And he just went right across and kept on going. And uh, so everything paid off. And that's what we like to see. Now, someone might say, you know, if they watch that, they might say, well, good job, Dwayne. You changed that little horse. That's what I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, I didn't change that horse. Um, In a very real sense, you can't change a horse any more than you can change a person. But this week is my birthday. It'll be this week. And mama went, I'm going to touch on you. heard that a little bit. Oh, I just kicked that. Uh, she knows me. That girl knows me so well. And she went and found me a, a good, really well-made, solid, antique rocking chair. And brought it out here and put it in the shop for me for an early birthday present. So thoroughly enjoying this today. So I want to thank mama for that. I do love that woman. I tell you what. Um, where was I? We can't really, in a in a very real sense, you can't change your horse. Now, we, it's the natural way that we try to approach it. My horse is afraid of everything, so I need to train my horse. So I need to change my horses. I need to change my horse. But you're not going to change your horse. Now, you can do some things that creates change in your horse. And I'm not just splitting hairs here. Stay with me, okay? Um, like, you can stop feeding them all this junk sweet feed full of molasses and let them calm down, okay, from being over fat and being jacked up and all this stuff. Uh, you can make dietary changes, uh, and that will affect their behavior. You can get them out of a stall and let them out in natural in a pasture in a paddock more often. That will help change their behavior. But when it comes to horses that are aggressive, horses that are disrespectful, horses that are pushy, horses that are um, like Joe was, that are reactionary, that are afraid, horses that are lazy, like mouse, um, we don't change the horse. Now, it's important how you look at this. Because if you mistakenly have the idea that it is your responsibility to change your horse from a disrespectful horse to a respectful horse. Okay, let's just use that. But it'll carry across anything. And your horse is not responding. And your horse is not becoming respectful. Then it is human nature to have that sense of responsibility. It's my responsibility to change this. And since what I'm doing is not working, I need to escalate. That's often that's the first place we go. I need to escalate what I'm doing. Now we'll try to change it. We'll try to come up with something else, but we'll try to change it. We'll get frustrated. And, uh, and same works with people. Uh, ladies, God love you and bless your heart. You can't change your husband. All right. Some of you have been trying for 30 years since you married him to change him. And it just ain't working, all right? I know. Um, 
And fellas, same thing. You can't change your wife. You can't change them. Um, so what is it with the horse? Let's go back to that. Joe changed, absolutely. But I didn't change him. This is so paramount that you understand this when you go out to work with your horse. I didn't change him. I offered him an alternative approach and he chose to change how he responded. Now, horses aren't on a, a um, they're more on an instinctive level than we are. They're not on a, um, what's the word I want? I mean, we use reason. They're not on a reason level like we are, of course. But he, at his level, at his instinct, said, I can do this or I can do that. Now, before, this is the only, this is the only option that I knew. My instinct said, this is the option that I should take. But I offered him a new option and showed him the advantages of that option and then patiently let him choose. And he chose peace. Oh, I see the light bulb went on. Some of you were like, you got that big aha moment right there. Okay. Um, you have to offer your horse options and you have to offer that option in a way that they perceive it for being the better option for them. And then you have to be patient depending on how stubborn the horse is or how fearful the horse is or whatever the situation is, you gotta be patient for them to choose to finally accept and choose the better option. It goes with reining, your bits, your leg work, everything. You come in and you offer them a better option. And they're like, I, I don't, first off, they're like, I don't understand that option. I don't see how that's an option. But you continue on and then they figure out, hey, that is not, I actually have a choice. At first they don't think they have a choice. But now they're like, I have a choice. I can choose A or I can choose B. Again, not with that depth of human reasoning, okay? But it's there. And, uh, and then they make the choice. They choose to change. A lot of relationships between rider and horse are broken. They're very unhappy, <laughs> very unsafe, okay? Because the rider is not showing the horse a better option and then being patient to let the horse choose the better option. Sometimes your horse won't choose a better option. That happens. It happens. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay? There's nothing you can do. If you do everything you can do to show them a better option, to make it positive, to try to make the good thing easy, and the bad thing hard. And they're just like, no, no. Okay. There's nothing you can do. All right. But what you cannot do is you cannot change the horse. You have to give the horse the opportunity to change himself. And it's the same with people. All right. There's a lot of marriages right now that are in a bad way. They're in a bad way. Uh, <clears throat> because one spouse has decided that the other spouse needs to change. And so they're going to change them. And you can't change them. Now, there's a lot of people out there have things that they need to change. Um, but, you know, I've worked enough in circles and areas that I know a person is not going to quit his alcoholism unless he gets to the point that he wants to change. Now you can have all the interventions you want. You can do all the crying. You can do all the begging. You can do all the pleading. 
You can pick him up from work and kidnap him and haul him down to Betty Ford. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's not going to work. You can't change him. He has to get to the point where he says, I want to change. I have to change. And sometimes they say, I want to change, but they only half want to change. They don't want to change fundamentally who they are. They want to change the price that they're paying for the life they're living. They don't want to pay that price anymore. That's why they fall off the wagon and keep going back to it. They want half of it, but they don't want the whole change. All right. Drugs is the same way. Um, infidelity is the same way. Um, temper, same way. Everything in life. You can't change other people. All you can do is offer them the opportunity for them to choose to change. And then how long you choose to be patient and to wait for them to want to change. And they may never. But all I'm saying is, is your nagging isn't going to work. It has never worked in the history of mankind. It has never worked in the history of your marriage. It hasn't worked. Um, it's not going to work for you. All right. Um, and husbands, I'm not, I'm not picking on the wives. Husbands, <clears throat> you're not, you're not going to change her by bullying her, by demanding that she change whatever it is it needs to change. Um, now, You know, to pick the low-hanging fruit, if you'll forgive me for doing so, uh, like if, if you're the breadwinner and you're bringing home the money and she's spending money indiscriminately, and uh, which, you know, I hear and people talk to me a lot about, and uh, you're staying broke all the time, and because of all the needless Amazon packages and all the trips to Starbucks and all the all this stuff, I mean, you don't nag her and try to change her. Uh, just change how you handle the finances and who has access to what, uh, but don't, you chew your own guts out and then you drive the other person crazy until you wind up hating each other for trying to change each other. And you can't change somebody else. They have to want to change. Okay. So all I'm offering right now for you folks who are who are going to be listening to this, I assume somebody will, maybe. Um, is take a step back. Take a deep breath. Look at the thing as a whole. Um, because we tend to look at the thing that we want to change and we try to change it. And so we focus on it. And after a while, that's all we see. That's all we see. And all the good things about the relationship, all the positive things about the relationship, all the good histories and everything, we don't take that into account anymore because we're so focused on trying to do the impossible and that's change another human being. God can change somebody, but even God won't change somebody unless they decide they want to be changed. God won't change somebody against their will. All right. So even God's not going to change somebody that don't want to change. Okay. So why beat yourself up? Why eat your guts out trying to do the impossible? Why put more stress and anger and contention on an already troubled relationship trying to accomplish what you are never going to accomplish? Look at yourself. Change anything about yourself that might help the situation because that's the only person you can change is yourself. And then just start looking at the positive things. All right. Well, I don't like that. And that drives me crazy, but that's pretty cool. All right. I like that. I like that. She's like that. I like that. He does that. Um, he, he's, he's a slob. I've been nagging him for 20 years. Pick your clothes up off the floor. Um, you know, put the toilet seat down, you know, whatever your particular deal is. And it's just driving me crazy. Does he work like a flipping dog? Does he work 40 to 60 to 80 hours a week? And does the best he can and provides a living, provides housing, food, does what he can. I mean, let's compare how big one thing really is to how little the other thing really is. 
okay? Um, does, uh, does, does she, whatever, you know, I don't know. Does she support you? Does she encourage you? Does she take good care of the kids? You know, are there good things? Well, stop sabotaging your relationship, trying to do the impossible. Let, let me, let me illustrate it like this. Let me do this illustration and I'll be done. Okay. Now, if I have a horse, if I have a horse that's just doesn't want to give to the bit and doesn't want to turn, okay, does not want to follow the signal, does not want to respond. Now, if I decide I'm going to change my horse, I'm going to change him, and I put a big old bit in his mouth, and I come in here, and I grab that rein, and I pull that head around, I say, you are going to turn right, and you're going to do it when I say so, and then I do left. Then I put my feet in the stirrups out in front of me like I'm on the pegs of a Harley motorcycle, lean back and suck them reins up to my chest, tuck his nose in there and say, you're going to stop. And after a while, he does stop. And he does turn right. And he does turn left. But then if I drop that barbaric force, what happens? We find out that he never changed. He didn't change. I bullied his behavior, but he didn't change. And in a relationship with people, it's the same thing. You can nag your spouse, your significant other, your child, your parent, your whoever. You can nag them and bully them. And sometimes you can get them to behave differently like that. Sometimes. But then you're going to have to do that for the rest of your time together. You're going to have to nag them. You're going to have to yell at them. You're going to have to cuss at them. You're going to have to bully them. You're, you're going to have to threaten them. You're, you're, just, you're going to have to do this all the time because you didn't actually change them. You bullied a temporary change in their behavior, but their heart never changed. And just like teaching your horse to stop, teaching your horse to rein, teaching your horse whatever, until you do less, you're not going to get more. The only way you're going to get more out of them, and this is a paradox, you're going to chew on it, you're going to think about it, you're going to have to experiment with it, but the only way you're going to get more willingly out of your partner is when you start doing less. The less you try to make them do over time, the more you're going to see. Okay? So, no, as a trainer, you don't change your horse. Okay? And as a husband, you don't change your wife. As a wife, you don't change your husband. Okay? Um, they're individuals. They have their rights. They have their mind. They have their own will. They have their own emotion. They have their own free will. Okay? And so it's up to them to change it. So stop beating yourself to death. And start bully ragging your horse or your spouse and let them make the changes. But you constantly offer a better solution. Gently, patiently, and consistently. All right? And you'll find out that all your relationships over time can end up better. Okay? All right. We're going in there. Be logical. Be reasonable. Be safe. Have fun and be patient. Just be patient. We'll catch you guys next time.